Brethren, praise the Lord. We thank God. Every moment is a thanksgiving to God, and so we thank him for every opportunity that he gives us. We are still in the resurrection moments. We are still in the Easter, Easter mood. And the Bible tells us that Jesus rose from the dead. And we read it evidently from the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and even other scriptures written by other apostles like Paul, and they talk about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we must give a lot of attention to it because without it, like we have said it before, we say it again, that the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is the center of our faith. And so we are going to continue with the resurrection. Remember, the Bible talks about his stay on us after he rose from the dead. Let me answer someone's question. Someone asked, how many days did Jesus spend after his resurrection? The answer is in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. And the Bible says, um, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And so after Jesus' resurrection, the Bible mentions 40 days. And it is in the 40 days that we read about many things that the Lord Jesus Christ did. One thing that as Christians we pride ourselves in is that he presented himself alive again. And that is the hope, that is our joy, that he presented himself alive again after he died. Of course, actually, he was captured. He was beaten. Like we have been talking about it. We be read, we read these things from the word of God. And they buried him. And the other time we were talking about rolled a stone and they sealed it. But listen to me, 40 days and 40, I mean 40 days, he presented himself alive. And so this is something that actually we as Christians actually makes us stand out as a faith which is living, actually is alive. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, it looked like it was dead, but he rose and he presented himself alive, as the scripture say. And so we are going to think through a few things. And this time, one of the things that we are going to think about is a journey that was made by some of his followers. And their hopes had been crushed. And I just want us to think about when hopes get crushed. They, I mean, what does it mean? And so we are going to read a portion of scripture here. When some people had hoped something greater, something bigger, something better. But his death devastated them. And so they, these men, we read Luke chapter 24, and Jesus had been buried and he had risen from the dead. And the report was given by one of the ladies, maybe two, maybe three, but Mary Magdalene at the forefront. And so we read from Luke chapter 24, and let us concentrate on verse 13 following. And in verse 13, the Bible says, that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles. They were moving out of the city, going back, going to the village called Emmaus. And while they were talking about the things that had happened, the verse 15 says, while well, they were talking, discussing, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. And he asked them a few questions. What are you talking about? And one of them is named, it's called Cleopas, said, are you the only visitor that is in Jerusalem? Of course, something happens and everybody knows that actually has happened. And for Jesus' death, everybody knew. But Jesus appears. And this is one of the appearances that they were talking about. Some people say that actually he appeared many, many times, more than 10 in the 40 days. And this is one of them. But our issue now is in verse 21, after the Jesus has, has interrogated them, what we're talking about. And in verse 21, he says, Cleopas, let's begin from verse 20. And the Bible says, and our, how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. 
and verse 21, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yet, and besides this, it is now the third day since these things happened. And we shall continue reading on and find time and read on by yourself. But because of the intensity of things, let us consider in this just a few moments about we had hoped. You know, Jesus interrogated them. They told him very many things. And one of the most profound statements, expressions in human life. You see, you may start something. You may begin a journey. You may begin a construction. You may begin a project. You may begin something with a hope. And hope is a wish, is a desire for a particular thing to happen. And all of us human beings, you and I, live by hope. You go to sleep hoping that you'll wake up. You wake up hoping that you'll close the day. You do something, go to the garden, you dig, hoping. You take a childhood to study, hoping. And so this word hope is something actually which is crucial, which is useful. And we live by it. Without hope, life cannot continue. And so this man told the Lord Jesus Christ that we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. It's very, very profound, very, very important in our life. And so it seemed like everything had ended. It had been crushed. Their hopes had been crushed. Their hopes had been shattered. And so they were walking from the city to the village, taking the other direction. And maybe they had stayed in Jerusalem for some time because of a few things, livelihood. People enjoy town life. People enjoy, you know. But when you go to town and there is nothing that you see as, you know, coming forward, you see someone, people tracking themselves back to the village to go and handle a hole. And so these men saw that actually Jesus' death had devastated them. And therefore they were unhappy. And these are the emotions of hopelessness. Unhappy, you see. They were, you know, you become at a loss. You get confused. You know, you become afraid. And therefore what you do, because there is no hope at all, you take off, you go other direction. And so they were left wondering what next. Even in our lives, we are left wondering what next. You have hoped for something, but you are left wondering. And so these people give us a very, very profound message in our life, your life and my life. We too have issues, instances in life, unseen, unforeseen, unanticipated things that dash our hopes, that crush our hopes, that devastate us. There are bends in life. I'm addressing the twists in life. And all of us feel like this man felt. The reason why Mary goes to the tomb crying, she cried there. The reason why the disciples all hidden is because their hopes had gone. And so all of us have life to live, have programs to accomplish, anticipations in life. For instance, you get married hoping. Okay, like I've already mentioned, you go to the garden to dig early morning hoping. You go weeding hoping. You take a child to school, those of you who are parents, those of us who are parents, you take a child to school hoping. You see, you go sit interview for a job hoping. You see, you start a business hoping. You know, you become a parent, first child, second child, name them hoping. And so there are many things that you do hoping and hope is the engine of life. But the moment hope dies, you become like a dead person, a dead. But listen to me. The reason why we read this 
The reason why this becomes so handy for us, we had hoped. And there are certain things as we, as we go in, there are certain things when they are available, there are certain people when they are available, when business is still there, when you know you don't see their value until everything is gone. We have had men and women, useful people. When they're still alive, people don't see their usefulness. Our Lord Jesus Christ, many people could just see him like anybody else. But it's after he dies, this is when we had hoped. And so, friends, this is one point that I also want to, to mention to you. Value the time. Value the moments when they are still there. Value somebody when they are still there. Are you a husband? Are you a wife? Are you a parent? Are you a child? Let not someone depart and then say, I had hoped. So let us do things as long as time is there. That's one lesson, really, that I wanted to put to you. And then another one is that hopes may crash, may seem crashed, may seem shattered. But one thing is sure, that the risen Lord Jesus Christ is alive. You see, he says that actually he appeared alive. And so as Christians, this is our center of the message, that the good news is that Jesus is alive, Jesus is there, Jesus walks along with us. And so I pray for you and I pray for myself, and this is the message, that may he draw closer, may he draw near. He drew near to these people and he walked along with them. And it's then that they entered with him into a house. They said, no, 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 visitor. Still, they didn't know that Jesus Christ was the one. And so they drew him in and it's after he breaks bread and he gives them, they eat and then, oh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he disappears from them. But he did the restoration there. So friends, the message that comes through in this resurrection story, from this point of view, when hope seemed to be crushed, draw closer, lean on. You know, who is your Lord and Savior? And it's the Lord Jesus Christ whom I bring to you today. And so Mary um, knew what the secret was. And this man going to Cleopas and his colleague, companion, traveler, discovered the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as you walk along your life journey, your marriage journey, your work journey, your business journey, your everything journey in life, may the Lord Jesus Christ draw near and walk along with you. And so that your hope is not crushed. And I just want to finish with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse uh, 8, 7, and 9. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, this is what the Bible says. Paul puts it very, very clearly that we may be pressed, we may be hard pressed, we may, our hopes may seem like they are crushed. But listen, that, but we have this treasure in years of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. And that is our life. And verse 8, he says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair. Despair is dangerous. Despair in life, when you are crushed, and everything, you seem like every. That's why people strangle themselves. That's why people take poison when they're in despair. So deal with despair, deal with the hopelessness. And verse 9, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. You can read on. There are so many perplexities in life. So many, but are not forsaken. Our Lord Jesus Christ draws closer. And so I, I appeal to you during this 40 days over the journey that the Lord Jesus Christ is presenting himself alive, that stay on course. Stay on course, walk along with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that your hopes will not be crushed, but that you remain, like Paul is saying, that we are perplexed, but don't, not destroyed, we, that we are pressed down, but not destroyed, we are not forsaken, the Lord Jesus Christ is always with us, and he says so, that I'm with you always. So friends, I commit you into the hands of the Lord, and I commit myself into the hands of the Lord, that our hopes will remain focused. And may God keep you, may God provide for you, and may God walk along in your life journey, like he walked along with these men who were, who were traveling to a mouse. May the Lord walk along with you, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.